Hi guys, welcome to Grace and Coffee Homeschool. I am Megan. Um, today I'm gonna to be going over my curriculum picks for my second grader. I have a second grade um, son, so I'll be talking about what we're doing with him. I also have a 10th grader and a kindergartner, so I'll be doing those in another video. So if you're interested in seeing those, you can hit subscribe and the little notification bell um, so you can be notified when I post new videos. So basically, the first thing we do, I'm going to be doing in my second grader, we did it last year, and it worked out really well for prayer time, is on Facebook, there's a page called Operation World. They also have a um, web page with some resources on it. And they post a country every day, and um, they also post the particular needs the Christians in that country have, um, some information about the population, their religions in the country, and difficulties um, going on within that country so that you know um, specifically what to pray for for the Christians and the non-believers in um, that country. Some countries have more than one day. I think China had like 15 days. So um, the first thing we do, we pull it up. I pull up the weather for the day. Um, we look it up on the, we look the country up on the map. We look up traditional foods. Um, sometimes traditional dress, depending on the country. I sometimes um, will look at types of homes that the kids live in, um, types of schools, just different things I think my son might find interesting. So we count it as our geography, since we're learning about the um, where it is on the map and the weather and all that. We look it up, we count it as geography, social studies, since we're learning a little bit about the culture. And then um, it's also our prayer time, and it teaches them a little bit about the worldwide church. So he has a little bit of awareness um, about what's going on and knowing that America is where we live and this is where we are, but it's not necessarily um, the way it is around the world for all Christians and all believers. So it's just kind of a neat little thing to do. Um, he has a heart for missions, so um, I thought it would be a great way just to start him on learning to, pr to pray. And the way we did it last year is um, he would get to pick if he wanted to pray first or if he wanted me to pray first, and we'd both say a little prayer for um, the country. So that was kind of a neat thing. Um, I'll grab our... Oh, seat. Okay, so I filmed this last night, and then this morning I noticed that the video was a little bit wonky. I'm not sure why, so I thought, well, I'll just go ahead and redo the video. Um... But everybody is awake now, so hopefully we can get through this without too many interruptions um, from dogs or kids. So this is my second year, second graders um, folder. We used it last year for first grade, and you can see um, I just sort of wrote down what we needed to do um, on a piece of paper, and then I folded it over so we could go on to the next day. So we'll be using this again. Um, it makes it really easy. He opens it up. Um, I sometimes have him do his seat work when I'm pulling up the Operation World information, um, or sometimes I just have him do it. He's sometimes ready to start school when I'm still trying to deal with um, the little one or getting myself together. So he can come and do this, and he knows um, how to do all of this stuff without any help from me. So this is, we did CLE math last year, and we kind of um, were not too strict about doing his number writing. Um, so this year I just I put it in his seat work so he can just fill it out. It's just fun um, for him to do. It takes him about two seconds. We're working on days of the week and months of the year, so I just printed this out from um, education.com, and I printed several of these out with um, either days of the week or months of the year. Um, just little activities for him. So this one he just cuts them out and then pastes them on in the right order. And this one he'll have every day. I did this on um, Word. So um, he circles the day, the month, and the date on that. Again, that's just like a little two-second worksheet. And then one of his favorite things, mazes. I got a maze book for him. So I'll just be tearing a sheet out from that every day. Um, and he can do that. So I, my kindergartner, what I'm doing, they get harder as they go. So with my second grader, I'm starting from the back and going towards the center. And for my kindergartner, I'm starting from the front and going towards the center. So they each have two mazes that they can do every day for their seat work. He also has the printing book from Handwriting Without Tears that he'll be doing um, with my supervision, mostly on his own, but a little bit of, of supervision. Um, he tends to like to sort of either do his own thing with his letters or just get lazy. 
So he knows how to write them, but this is just kind of to make sure he's paying attention, going a little bit slower, um, and writing neatly. And then for... Okay, sorry about that. For our devotion time, we're going to be using Indescribable, 100 Devotions About God and Science by Louis Giglio. Uh, we've done some of these... And they're just neat little things about the world around you um, with God as the focus. And then there's little prayers at the end of each one. If I can get it to focus, there we go. Um, God, when I start to feel like I'm nobody special, remind me of who I really am, a marvelous miracle made by you. And that one looks like it's about DNA. Um, so we just, he enjoys this. He likes science. So he learns a little something, gets a little information about God and how it relates to his day-to-day -day life. So then we also have the case for faith for kids. I'm going to give this a shot. Yeah. We may not be able to use this um, this year. We may be able to start it. We started the case for Christ last year, and um, he sort of had a hard time understanding. It was a little bit over his head. This one looks a little bit more um, straightforward and simple, I guess, if that's the right word. Um, it looks like it's more on his level. So we'll start that and see how it goes. If not, we will put it back. I have the case for faith, the case for Christ, and I believe I also have the case for miracles for kids. So um, if it doesn't work, that's fine. We'll just put it back and um, bring it out another time. And I also have an idea for a um, more of a full Bible curriculum that I want to use this year. I just have not purchased it yet, but I will list it in the description bar um, below if you want to um, see that. Okay, so for reading, last two, the last two years we did Logic of English Foundations. Um, my son made it all the way through D, almost. I think we have about 10 lessons left in D, but we're going to go ahead and um, go to this Ordinary Parent's Guide to Teaching Reading. Um, he was understanding his phonics rules. He knew all the sounds of the phonics. Um, like if you if you gave him the sound of a phonic, like the A, the two letter A that you wouldn't use at the end of an English word um, is AI, and he would be able to answer that question. So he was doing really well with that, but um, turning that into being able to read smoothly and fluently, there was just a little bit of a disconnect there. So what I thought we would do this year is go to this ordinary teacher's. Ordinary Parent's Guide to Teaching Reading. It's a mouthful, this one. Um, and just, we're going to start at Lesson 31. I mean, he knows all his letters. He knows all his sounds. So we're just going to kind of do this, you know, ham, jam, pam, sam. It's a little bit different of a different approach. Um, more of a, I call it the Dick and Jane approach. So I feel like he has all of his bricks in his foundation from Logic of English it's a great program. I will be doing a video just on Logic of English, um, a review of that, and why we are going to Ordinary Parents Guide and why we're kind of almost going backwards in a way, um, and why I made that decision for him. So if that's something you're interested in, um, hit that subscribe and notification bell, and leave a comment down below with any specific questions so I can um, answer those for you. But um, you know, we're just we're just filling in that. I feel like we're filling in the mortar between the bricks to help him sort of understand the concepts that he learned and sort of transition it into um, better reading. A logic of English has um, some reading assessments. I think it's like every five lessons. And while he was doing well with those, there didn't seem to be any progression as we went through D. So I'm hoping this will just help him with that make him make reading a little bit more intuitive rather than having to really pick out every sound and every word because it does make um, comprehension a little bit more difficult for him so we're just going to go back and then we're going to start at 31 and, and the plan is to do two lessons in here a day um, that may change we may do more I'm sure at some point we will slow down because um, it goes a little further than Foundations D does, um, I believe, from what it looks like. So we'll hit a point where we're going to be slowing down. But for now, the plan is two lessons a day. And, oops, 
now we have kids coming in. That's all right. Okay, so for phonics, um, for a little bit extra, we're doing this basic phonics skills. Um, I have lesson C. We probably will not go in order. If he's learning a specific phonics um, or phonic in here, blend, consonant blend or whatever, if they have a page on that in here, we will probably just kind of um, go to that one. So the plan isn't just to go from cover to cover in this, but to pick out. Um, different pages that fit in with what he's learning in Ordinary Parents Guide. And some of the easier ones I may just put in his seat work just for extra practice um, for him to do. And we're going to be doing tons and tons and tons of reading. Hang on a second. Okay, kids played outside. They needed to come in and wash their feet even though they had sandals on. It's a bit muddy here. Um, <laughs> but anyway... Lots and lots and lots and lots of reading just to continue um, building on his uh, fluency. He really loves these Mr. and Putter books. It's all right, Toby. He really loves these Mr. Putter and Tabby books. So, and our library has some. He's read this one. We'll read this one again and get some more from the library. Um, he enjoys Mouse and Mole, Little Bear. So we're just going to read, read, read. And practice, practice, practice. And for history, we're going to be doing um, little books. Like this is Magic Treehouse. We have a Magic Treehouse audiobook in the car that they're actually really liking. So um, that's kind of fun. So we'll be doing, for history, we'll be adding in um, books that he can read and we can read together along with um, probably some worksheets from like Teachers Pay Teachers. Last year, we ended the year on... Um, Egypt. So we were learning about ancient Egypt and we got a book from the library called You Wouldn't Want to Be Cleopatra. They had a kid's book on King Tut. Um, and we got some on the pyramids. So we'll be doing that again, utilizing our library, kind of going with his um, interests and using a bit of read-alongs or read um, books that he can read himself, teachers pay teachers, and some books that I can read to him. All right. Okay, so Logic of English had um, grammar um, as part of it. It was a full language arts curriculum, so it was phonics, reading, um, grammar, and spelling. So um, since we're not going with that, I'm, I went ahead and got him a separate grammar um, curriculum. So I used Growing with Grammar, and it's pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Um... He learned some of this last year in D, like capital letters, but these were not things that were really um, focused on in the Logic of English Foundations, so I'm not sure how much of it stuck, so we'll be going over all of that again. Um, you know, sentences, periods, subject, predicate. So all this, most of this will be new to him. Well, he understands what a question is and all that, but most of this will be new to him, so... What? Okay, so, and um, it also comes with tests. This little, I love this little envelope. Something about it feels very top secret. I don't know what it is about it. <laughs> Makes me think of Mission Impossible. Should you choose to accept your mission? Okay, so anyway, forgive my, my weirdness there, but um, tests and the answer keys are here. And it also comes with a level one answer key, which I'm thinking probably is not necessary at this level but it came all in a kit and it was like I don't know maybe $16 for the kit so it's very inexpensive um, and this year with a lot of these things like with grammar and spelling I'm really kind of going to focus on trying to understand his learning style um, what type of um, approach is going to work for him what clicks what doesn't click so this is kind of a let's see how he does with this um, and we can go from there if we want to continue with this um, publisher this is Jack Chris publishing um, if we want to continue with this or want to switch to something else the other thing we have that we really like is um, these excuse me are these um flashcards from Logic of English, and you can get these separately. You don't have to use Logic of English to get the flashcards. I can get these out here. So these are the grammar flashcards, so you can see a noun 
is the name of a person, place, thing, or idea. We also do a lot of person, place, or thing in our family. We do a ton of um, that game. We sit around and do it um, sometimes around the dinner table, sometimes in the car. Our kids like it, and it's just kind of a great brain booster. Um, paragraph begins with an indent. These are upside down. Um, use an apostrophe apostrophe to form a possessive noun adjective. So what I think we'll prob I'll probably do is pull out the cards, because obviously with a different um, curriculum, we're going to be doing things in a different order than Logic of English teaches them. So what I will do is go through here, and when he's learning a concept in Growing with Grammar, I'll pull the card and add it to our stack so he can go through that. And we'll just kind of see if flashcards work for him. Um, he's very motivated by um, tests. So for some reason, my phone stopped. But anyway, he's motivated by tests. Anytime something is timed or there's a challenge, um, that seems to motivate him, and he tries a little bit harder. So I'm thinking maybe we can play some games with the um, flashcards that will kind of um, be fun for him. And then with spelling, we got from the same publisher, um, we got Soaring with Spelling, level one. And um, we did level one. He probably could have done level two. But again, I kind of want to see what works for him and what doesn't. And this is a list-based spelling um, rather than, well, like Logic of English is very phonics-based. So they don't do lists of words. They, you know, you just learn... Um, your phonics, so you're sounding out words, so you get, you you don't have a list and memorize. This is kind of a list, memorize them, take a test at the end of the week. Um, so we'll probably go through a lot of these really, really fast. We may not even do one a week at the beginning with these simple words, but we may. We'll see how it goes, and we'll see if this list kind of doing the same sounds um, to learn to read works for him, or spell works for him. If it doesn't, um, then we can reassess next year. But but that's my goal this year, to see what works for, for him in particular and what doesn't work. And just like we have the grammar rules um, from Logic of English, we also have their spelling rules flashcards. So we'll be using these as well. So it won't just be memorizing a list of words. Let me get these out here. So, and what I really love about Logic of English, and what um, I would even recommend these if you're not doing Logic of English, because um, she does this great thing with usually, always, sometimes um, kind of thing. So you, like A-E-O-U, usually say their long sounds at the end of a syllable. So it's a usually rule, which means you're going to come across some that, that do not. Here's an always. When one syllable words end in a single vowel Y, it always says I. And I really like that. And in, in Logic of English, she gives reasons. If we go back to Logic of English Essentials, which I do not see um, happening, we will do probably like a Greek or a Greek and Latin, you know, root word type um, program when he gets a little older. But in the meantime, he's going to be learning um, the, his onlys, always, sometimes, usually. Um, see, always softens to a s when followed by, by e, i, y. Otherwise, c says. So these are the things that Logic of English does. Um, that for him, he did well. He learned them. But then when he was trying to re sit down and read a book, he had all these. Okay, just a minute. He had all these little bits of information in his head and like the fluency was starting to um, kind of get slower the more information. It was like his brain was being overloaded by all this little stuff. And so this year we're just really going to focus, just a second, we're just going to really focus on reading. And we're going to use these kind of as an um, add-on to it, not as the core reading. So sorry that the video is a little bit choppy. Um, but we have kids running around, and we just had a stubbed toe emergency that required a Band-Aid stat. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, which turned into a three-year-old with a blueberry stain that needed a Band-Aid for that. So anyway, you know how it goes. Um, so for math, we're switching from CLE to Math Mammoth. 
And just like with the reading, I'll be doing a full video on a review of CLE, Math Mammoth, um, the whole story of why we're switching, um, what we loved about CLE, what we didn't love about CLE, and, and stuff like that. Now, I want to say that math, CLE math is a great curriculum. I, I highly recommend it. I don't say... I mean, I, I could, it would be hard, I would be hard pressed to find anything I really didn't like about it. That being said, my second grader is very math minded, very logical, left brained. Um, my husband said the other day when we were coming home from T ball, it was late, everybody was kind of grumpy, and um, my second grader started doing math in his head and asking math questions and um my husband said you know he he relaxes himself with um numbers and math and you know math stresses me out so i was like oh well good for him but <laughs> you know he's trying to teach himself um multiplication when we're not even close to that so he's just math is his thing now cle is great but um i thought that doing a mastery approach rather than a spiral where it goes back and does lots and lots of review would be a better idea. He got a little bored with the review. Um, he doesn't need it. Once something clicks in his brain with math, it sticks. It's there. He's got it. He doesn't need to go over it a million times. Um, my oldest needed lots and lots of review. CLE was great for her. Um, so we're switching to Math Mammoth because it is mastery. Um, the only thing I didn't like about it when I was looking at it is how much is on one page. Oh my goodness. Um, well, the clock's not so much. But there's a lot of information packed on. Well, that's, there's the, let's find a good page. There we go. There's a lot of stuff packed onto a single page. For me, I would find that difficult. We'll see if it bothers uh, my son or not. And if so, we'll probably just get like a page and cover up. Um, what he's not working on. It may not be an issue for him at all. He may just zoom right through that and, and not. All of it would just um, send my brain into a panic probably. But again, I, I don't like math. But you can see in CLE, there's just a little bit more space between things. They're not quite as close together. This is our 110. We did not finish the 110. We didn't finish the last workbook. Like I said, the end of the year for us was, um, we got to the point at the end of last year where it was like, hey, we're just, we're going to stop. Not so much my 10th grader because she can't quite do that the way, um, a second grader can, but we were kind of like, okay, it's, we just need to, we need a break. Um, we had some family emergencies come up and, and, you know, that's a great thing about homeschooling. Life kind of took center stage for a while. Okay. So for science. Real quick, just to add in, I forgot this. I'm a little less organized and a little less caffeinated this morning than I was last night. Um, for reading, we also have this fun little thing for the hung Very Hungry Caterpillar that I grabbed at a homeschool um, store where my mom lives. I do not have a homeschool store in my town. Um, I think probably an hour and a half away. We're about an hour and a half from Dallas. Um, there is one. But um, where my mom lives, she has a really cute little homeschool store. So I just picked this up. I don't know, probably even probably a year and a half ago, and set it aside, and we're going to use it this year. So you just read it, the book, and there's some vocabulary activities, analyzing literature, uh, there's language learning, more vocabulary, uh, making connections in the life cycle, there were some art projects, um, plural nouns, so they're just getting all kinds of different... Um, there's reader response, um, different activities and different learning things, um, to go along with the book and they have, they have more. So we'll probably do another one this year. Um, little bear maybe or frog and toad. Um, but we'll probably be getting more of these. Okay. For science, we're just starting off with this integrating science. Um, we are. We did some of it last year, and it's really simple. I mean, it is really basic. There's nothing, you know, in-depth in this, but just fun little things. There's some little experiments you can do. Um, 
how how whales uh, float, I think, and their buoyancy. We did that last year. Um, catching a clue. It's just their comprehension questions. So it's just, it's kind of fun. Um, it doesn't take a lot of time. I'm looking at, you know, doing a real science uh, curriculum next year. My son likes science, so we do a lot of videos and um, books from the library on different things about weather. And um, oh, he's really into weather. We live in Oklahoma. We live in Tornado Alley. So tornadoes and storms are um, things he's interested in because they he deals with them um, all the time in real life. So we do a lot of reading and a lot of videos for science. So for this year, we're just going to do this for fun. Now, actually, we will probably be done with this probably in the first eight or nine weeks, um, if not sooner. So we'll have to find something else to, to add to that. Um, but I'm not super worried about um, finding um, an in-depth science curriculum that's going to take us a lot of our, our time. To okay, so that is what we are using for second grade. Let me know in the comment section what you guys are using for second grade or if you have any opinions on any of this. If you have questions, let me know those as well. Um, look for those videos on logic of English compared to ordinary teacher parents guide, um, math mammoth and logic of English or logic of English, um, CLE math. So I'll be doing those in the near future along with that, uh, 10th grade and kindergarten curriculum. So hit the subscribe and notification bell. I also have a Facebook page if you want to say hi there, um, or join my community on Facebook. It's always great to have more community. Um, I have been joking that they shouldn't talk about unsocialized homeschool kids because they usually have all kinds of things going on. It's their moms that end up being unsocialized. Um, oh, sorry about the dog. Because we are so busy <laughs> with kid things that sometimes we forget to socialize ourselves. So Facebook is a great place for community. And until next time, guys, I'll leave you with my barking dog. Happy homeschooling. See you guys next time.